Welcome to Open Source Video Game Part 2 Tutorial Series. Special thanks to all my followers because it parallels with my desire to display easy video game development skills and drives me to continue developing these tutorials. Blender just released 2.64 and some of you Windows users may be wondering where the toggle system console is under the help drop down menu as displayed in part 1 of this series. Blender 2.64 now has a new window drop down menu where you can now find the toggle system console. We have a lot more to cover, so as promised, we will start part 2 with Python variables. Expressions like the integer 27 or the string text are called literals, coming from the fact that they literally mean exactly what they are as types discussed in part 1. They are distinguished from variables which a value is not directly determined by their type. The sequence of characters used to form a variable name and names for other Python identities is called an identifier. It identifies a Python variable or other identity. There are some restrictions on character sequence that make up an identifier. The characters must be letters, digits, underscores, and must start with a letter or underscore. In particular, punctuations and spaces are not allowed. There are some words that are reserved for special use in Python. You may not use these words as your own identifiers. There are also identifiers that are automatically defined in Python and that you could redefine. But you probably should not unless you really know what you are doing. When you open the Blender editor and select the syntax highlighting for scripting, we will see how Blender uses different colors such as purple, orange, and blue, depending on your choice of theme colors you have selected, that assist you to know what identifiers are predefined. The colors may be changed by selecting the user preference and change the theme color display settings. To find the user preference, select File found at the top. Select the user preferences from the drop down menu. Select the themes found at the top tabs. You can adjust any of the display colors of your own custom theme or you can use one of the presets that is found on the top left. I personally use the Elysium preset. You even have the option to add your own themes by selecting the plus sign next to the preset drop down menu and call it whatever you wish. Python is case sensitive. The identifiers text, text, and text are all different. Be sure to be consistent. What is recognized by Python is distinct from what is conventional, good practice, or recommended. Meaningful names for variables are important. It takes full advantage of high-level language for the humans who are reading the programs to understand them and revisit them. That sometimes means you would like to use a name that is more than one word long, like jumping animation. But Python does not understand this as one identifier because of the space and will cause an error. One poorer option is leaving out the blanks, like so. Then it may be hard to figure out where the words split. Two practical options are, you could put underscores in place of the spaces, or omitting the spaces altogether by using a camel case, which is all lowercase for the first word and capitalizing the first letter of the words after. Whatever method you use, stay consistent so that it continues to be read easily by humans. After a while, you will adopt a good style of good practice that you feel comfortable with. Variables in Python are also known as pointers or binders. This is because Python sees everything as objects, therefore treats variables in a different manner than most but not all other programming languages. With some other languages, variables are required to be declared like putting a variable in a labeled box. With Python, however, the value itself is declared as its own object type by the way we wrote it, as we discussed in part 1. Therefore, it is not necessary to declare an identifier as well. In fact, any identifier you choose to create may point or bind to any other object type, and even point or bind to a different object, no matter what type the other object is. Temporary labels as identifiers are another way to think of variables, which may be a temporary binder to any object, may be a temporary binder to other identifiers, and even move to any other object or identifier. 
it is important to understand why Python variables need to be understood as referenced identifiers. As an example, I will introduce the first Python internal function called print to show the output of the values we will identify with variables. I will explain more about functions later. We can see that this Python internal print function displays the value we identified with the object of variable 1 and not the identifier name. We can even identify an identifier and Python will then identify two identifiers to the exact same object. We have to be careful when doing this and manage our identifiers well because if the programmer or events within the script were to change the original identified value, the value that identifies the original will still identify the original value unless updated as well. Here we can see exactly how Python reads our script line by line and how we can change the type of object that a variable identifies. First we have identified variable 1 to an integer number of 1. Then we identified variable 2 to the same object as variable 1 which is the exact same integer number of 1. Next we change the value and object type that variable 1 is identifying to a string hello world. Then we print variable 1 and variable 2 we get hello world and 1. Notice that variable 2 did not change to the new value that we gave variable 1 even though we told variable 2 to identify variable 1. At the time we gave variable 2 the value of variable 1, variable 1 had the value of an integer 1 and we changed the variable 1 after identifying variable 2. Again, it is important to understand how a variable is identified by Python. If we truly wanted variable 2 to continue to have the same value as variable 1, then we need to acquire good practice with variable management and update both identifiers. There is one more aspect I should mention about variables since we are on the subject. Variables can either be local or global. I will come back to discuss more about local and global variables when we start exploring functions and classes. We already discovered Python's internal print function, which may seem like a Python command word. We will return to the internal print function when we start to explore functions because we need to first understand the basic command words that Python can understand. The first Python command word we will cover is called import, which is normally, in good practice, used at the top of your scripts. The proper Python term for script is called a module. The import command allows us to load other modules into the module that we are currently working on so we do not have to rewrite any of the modules we may have already written, use other modules that others have written, and use modules that are stored in very useful libraries. Before I can show you an example of the import command, we need to learn how to save your modules to your computer's disk. Going back to our variable module, select text seen at the bottom of the text editor and select save as. Select a file on your computer to save your module and save as module1.py. The py extension identifies our text as a Python module so Python can find it. To start a new module, select the plus found next to the name field. Into the name of your new module we will call module 2. To import the first module into our second module, type the command word import following the module name that we wish to import, which in our case for example is module 1, without the .py, because Python already assumes we would import a Python module and seeks the requested name with all the files that have a .py extension. If we were to run module 2 right now, Python will actually run our module 1 only one time while loading all of its values. The reason Python only runs our imported module once is because Python has a safeguard to prevent from reloading values into the memory of your computer over and over again in case it ever got locked up into a never ending loop. To show this as an example, we can run module 2 again and we will see that nothing that will happen. There is a way to force a reload at runtime that is used more by networking refreshing applications 
that may be needed to update scripts to keep sync in similar applications. Thus, we will not need for our current project. I will also explain a way to extract all the values we identified within the module without Python executing any of the commands and or called functions after we understand comparisons and functions. For now, it is important to learn how we can load other modules and their values into a current module without rewriting them. To use imported variables and their identified values, we must refer to the module that we are getting them from. For example, here we see we have the same variable name in module 2 as we do in module 1. Python has taken an account of all the numerous amounts of modules that may have the same variable names and eliminates the chance of any variables becoming overwritten by modules that may have the same variable names. This way, it is clear that variable 1 in module 1 dot variable 1 are in fact their own identifiers. The from command word is used with the import command word. We simply tell Python what module we want with the from command and follow with what variables or other identifiers we want to import. When using the from command word, notice we did not have to tell Python what module or variable 1 is in the print function. So what if we already had a variable 1? One or the other would in this case be overwritten, depending on which was assigned first. When using the from command, we must be careful not to use the same identifier names. If we risk the chance of overwriting, then why would we ever want to use the from command? The answer is to have the option to save ourselves a lot of repetitive typing when we will certainly know and are aware of all the identifier names in all the modules. The from command becomes very useful and a huge time saver if we can simply manage the names of our identifiers. To assist the management of these identifiers while using the from command word brings us to our next command word as. If we are aware of two or more modules having the same identifier names, the as command word still gives us the option for a shorthand method. The as command word simply allows us to change the identifier's name as we import it from another module. What if we need a few identifiers from another module? We could, in fact, repeat the from statement. Yet, this may seem like we are saving on typing, but causes us to type a lot just to gain the benefit of saving ourselves from typing a lot. Here's our first example of what may work in Python doesn't always mean good practice. Good practice allows modules to be easily read by yourself or others and maintain optimum performance. One key in maintaining good practice is to be aware of repetitive typing. If you ever find yourself typing the same expressions over and over again, stop and ask yourself if there's an easier, cleaner, and faster way of completing the same task. In this case, we could save ourselves typing and help make our module look much cleaner, which will also make it easier to read. Here we actually imported all the identifiers that module 1 had. I use this method to show you how to import specific identifiers from a module of choice while saving ourselves typing without having to type out the module name every time we need to use variable 1 and variable 2 within our current module. Yet there is an even shorter way if we were wishing to extract all the identifiers from a module using the from command. This statement is exactly like the one above because the one above is extracting all the identifiers in module 1, as the asterisk does in the statement below. Again, we must be very careful using this expression and prevent overriding other identifiers. The del statement is an abbreviated delete. The del statement works by unbinding the name, removing it from the set of names known to the Python interpreter. If this variable was the last remaining reference to an object, the object will be removed from the memory. If, on the other hand, the variables still refer to this object, the object won't be deleted. That is all the time we have left for part two. In part two, we covered variables and modules, such as literals and identifiers, Python reserved words, 
user preference themes, variable names, how Python uses variables, variable management, local and global variables, module and saving name module. We also covered some but not all command words such as import, from, as, the asterisk, and del. We also discussed some things to look out for such as repetitively typing code, importing same variable names with the from statement. And lastly, we talked about some good practice programming by keeping our code easy to read and ways to save ourselves time and keeping our code optimized. Part 3 will start with comparisons and sequencing.